Welcome to Problem Solved, the IISE podcast. I'm Cody Hall, the Director of Process Excellence for Davis Health in Elkins, West Virginia, and we wanted to give our podcast audience a preview of the 2023 Healthcare Systems Process Improvement Conference taking place February 15th through 17th at the Kentucky International Convention Center in Louisville. You can register by November 18th and save big on early bird registration rates. Learn more at IISC.org slash HSPI slash register. In this episode, we talk to our own Society for Health Systems president-elect, Louisville Liz Elizabeth Gentry, about local hotspots and tourist attractions in her hometown. We'll then talk to HSPI conference chair Ashley Benedict about several conference highlights as well as networking opportunities. And last, we'll talk with Tom West from the Green Dot Consulting Group about a new feature of this year's conference, Intensives, which are deep dive sessions that focus on exclusive topics. All right. So, Liz, thank you for joining us today. We know that you're a native of Louisville or Louisville, depending on how you pronounce it. So for starters here, um, what is the correct pronunciation of the town that you live in? (laughs) I say it as Louisville. Okay, so is that the common term among the people who live there? We don't want our conference attendees coming in and, uh, you know, (laughs) insulting your town all the time. What should should people be saying when they get off the airplane? (laughs) Most people say Louisville. You know, especially the natives, but some people like to call it Louisville if they've never been there before. And it's definitely not that. Um, So Louisville. Okay, we'll stick with Louisville then. I'll try to remember that and not make that mistake 14 (laughs) times on this podcast today. So what made you decide to call Louisville home? So I was born and raised there. I lived, I grew up a little bit closer to Fort Knox. Now I'm on the northern end, kind of like on your way to Cincinnati. I um, grew up, went to university here, and then I moved to Dallas afterwards, Um, lived there for four years. I loved Dallas, but um, my grandma was 94, and I got a job offer to teach as a professor at the University of Louisville, and it seemed like just the right time for me to move back and for me to spend her last two years um, in the same city. And so I did that. And then I was in academia for a while and realized that I wanted to go back into industry. And I was open to moving as well. But um, I really wanted to stay in Louisville. It's it's just a great city. It feels like a city in a small town, if that makes sense. Um, Yeah. Most people, especially the natives, if you come across somebody, usually you can find a common acquaintance, whether it's like somebody, your cousin or somebody you went to school with. And so it it is a city, but it also feels like a small town. So I, that's yeah. really what I like about it the most. Yeah, that's great. So you kind of got that small town charm mixed with the <laughs> big city feel. That's always yes. a good thing. All yes. right. Great. Great. So when I think of Louisville. I think of uh, Churchill Downs, the Kentucky Derby, you know, the Louisville Slugger Baseball Museum, uh, your Louisville Cardinals, who I know, you know, you're a big alumni of, uh, and my personal favorite, the Bourbon Trails. So can you tell us a little bit more about some of these things, you know, what makes Louisville famous and, and kind of what our conference attendees at the HSBI conference can, uh, can tap into with regard to those? So the conference is going to be right in the middle of downtown, which is awesome. And there's things to do downtown from going to the Nulu Marketplace, which is really cool because they have just some cool restaurants. Um, They have places where you can try bourbon and different things like that. And then you also have, as you mentioned, Cody, the Louisville Slugger Museum, which is a really cool place to go and do a tour. I always recommend it for people who've never been there to go and see how the bats are being made. They will list in their um, tour the current bats that are being made for the baseball players. So like, for example, Adam Duvall, who is from Louisville, um, Mm -hmm. he went to my high school. He his bats are always made Louisville slugger bats. And so you can see whose bats are being made that day. So it's a really cool cool. and it's really cool for industrial engineers as well to see. Churchill Downs also has tours. There's not going to be any races happening, but you can still go to the museum and do a tour. It's a really cool place if you've never been there to see it. Yeah. 
And then the bourbon tours and the bourbon trail <laughs> is really cool. I have been to a few weddings that are on the bourbon trail. And if you have extra time, if you're staying through the weekend, I highly recommend to do that. In fact, one of the places on the bourbon trail is the restaurant um, in the airport. So it's called Books and Bourbon. So if you're flying into Louisville, I encourage you to stop at that restaurant because it's considered one of the stops on the bourbon trail. Okay, awesome. So whether your <laughs> hobby's bourbon, horses, baseball, you know, we, we've got it all. There's there's a ton for a lot of different audiences. Okay, so that's kind of the things that Louisville's famous for. I already messed it up, Louisville. Not kind of the things that Louisville's famous for. So what are some things that Louisville has to offer that we as uh, outsiders don't know about your hometown? Okay, so a new and exciting thing in Louisville that's coming that everybody's talking about is Top Golf. It's opening this December or maybe November. They said right around Thanksgiving. Awesome. And everybody's super excited about that. So it will be open for the conference. And if you've ever played Top Golf before, I have a lot in, when I was living in Dallas. And so everybody's excited about it. It's going to actually be connected to one of our malls. So if you don't like Top Golf, you can go shopping shopping too. <laughs> okay. But everybody's really excited about that. That's great. So sports enthusiasts, shopping enthusiasts, there's something for everybody. <laughs> yes. All right. So Liz, last question here. I'll just ask you, what are you most excited about as you think of the idea of uh, welcoming HSBI attendees to the place that you call home? What makes you the most excited about that? I'm really excited for people to see Louisville, but to also see all of the healthcare going on in downtown Louisville. Yeah. There are so many hospitals and healthcare organizations all over Louisville, but especially in the downtown area, you have the university hospital system and all the hospitals that go with that. You have Norton yeah. Healthcare, you have Baptist Healthcare. So you have all of these different companies, different hospitals, and they see patients all across the area because because if you look at Louisville on the map, you have all these rural areas all around Louisville. So there are a lot mm -hmm. of helicopter flights into the hospitals in Louisville. Right. Um, so you see a lot. So I, that's what I'm most excited about. I think a lot of people may not realize how much hospital activity is actually going on in this city. With all of the healthcare organizations in Louisville, the CEO panel is going to be, I think, a really insightful part of the conference. Yeah. And plus, just to interact with all the conference attendees and learn about what all they're doing, um, not only in Louisville, but of course, all over. So it's going to be a great conference. Any area that has a dynamic healthcare market is going to be a huge benefit to our attendees. So we're excited to have Louisville host us. So Liz, thank you for your time. Um, thank you for telling us all about about your hometown and we're looking forward to having Louisville Liz welcome us to uh, to where she's from so thanks again for your time appreciate it thanks Cody so now we're joined by our 2023 uh, HSPI conference chair Ashley Benedict Ashley thanks for joining us thanks for having me Cody so tell us a little bit about what we have coming up this year at the conference. Talk a little bit more about the offerings that we have uh for the HSBI conference in 2023 in Louisville? Sure. So we start on Wednesday, February 15th. We're going to offer four pre-conference workshops. We got stuff around mistake proofing, teaching lean tools, um, mentorship as a career development tool. I'm really excited about that one, bringing in some of those soft skills yeah. and professional personal development workshops, and then looking at systemic sustainable process improvement. How often do we hear about organizations struggling to keep those improvements they made going, right? So we've got great yeah. workshops lined up. Um, we've also got a tour that I'm super excited about. It's the UPS World Port. And I found out it is the size of 90 football fields. It's larger than the Mall of Americas wow. in Minneapolis. So a tour going there. Um, it's right next to the airport and should be a really exciting activity. This will kind of be our pre-conference offerings. And then we will kick off with a student welcome reception like we always have to get those incoming students who are not sure what a conference is going to entail, kind of get them acclimated to it a little bit earlier than everybody else. Have some speed networking where, again, if you're new to the conference or you just want to meet some new people, we'll have that offering again. 
and then a welcome reception, uh, which I always love because it really kicks off the event and you get to see old faces that you've seen in the past, some new faces. Yeah. Um, and just a great time to kind of get excited about healthcare and improvement. Yeah. Get the week kick started. Yeah. On Thursday, we are kicking off the conference with a keynote from Jody Crane. It's going to be super exciting kind of hearing the work that he's uh, led in, in healthcare improvement and focused on emergency department improvement efforts. We'll get to interact with our exhibitors, which is always a great time. I know I love learning some of the different technologies that are out there. Any that you've experienced, Cody? I know you've been to many of the conferences in the past. Oh, yeah. I always look forward to speaking to, to the simulation software vendors, talking to universities, all of our longtime partners who, who do so much work for our conference and, and keep it running every year. So that's that's a huge opportunity. The universities are great. I love engaging with the universities too. They're always so fun to hear kind of how they're changing their curriculum to better match the needs of healthcare improvement. And uh, yeah, the simulation softwares. I mean, I'm like, oh my gosh, you can do that with a model. That's amazing, right? I mean, some of the improvement work that I know I'm doing is like, hey guys, what if we just communicate more, you know? And it's like, right. let's take it to the next level and they can help us get there. Absolutely. We will have, as always, our concurrent sessions. So these are the oral presentations that people submitted, their abstracts, and are going to be, you know, sharing projects that they have completed. Um, we got some interesting professional and personal development presentations this year. Uh, folk, we got sessions on uh, care redesign, operational excellence, just tons of great offerings. Um, really impressed with this year's submission of abstracts. That's great. A lot of great tracks and a lot of great areas of focus that are going to be yeah. very relevant to people who do what we do. Definitely. We are introducing something new this year called intensives, uh, which will kick off on Thursday. And this is something we're, we're excited about um, and looking at, uh, you know, how we can explore incorporating this more in future conferences. But these are set to be kind of engaging sessions. They're not meant to be, you know, one directional information sharing, but more engagement, you know, rolling up your sleeves and collaborating, having a discussion around book club. That's great. Yeah, just something new, some innovation kind of maybe getting sparked in there. So excited about trying that out. Again, we'll have more concurrent sessions because we've got too many great topics out there to not get them in front of people. A great problem to have. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, networking reception. And then we're actually going to offer a dinner at this year's conference with the Louisville CEO Council. Oh, wow. And we'll have some award celebration and all of that is always thrown in there, which we love to celebrate those that are doing great stuff in healthcare. On Friday, uh, again, we got concurrent sessions going on. We're going to have uh, more intensives offered. We'll kick off with probably breakfast with the exhibitors. So again, get to see their products, um, get to kind of engage with them some more. Yeah. Uh, so overall, a really exciting conference. I can't believe how much we're jamming into three days. It's going to be really exciting to see all of this kind of come together. Really thankful for the community of volunteers that are working on this conference and volunteering their time and energy to really provide a great slate for the attendees. Absolutely. It's pivotal to have a great team, you know, working alongside of you to make a big event like this happen. So yes, definitely. Absolutely. Shout out to them. So I hope everyone listening is planning on attending our conference uh, in Hold on. Liz taught me Louisville, Kentucky, February 15th, 16th and 17th. That's great, Ashley. I'm looking forward to uh, learning more about UPS and how they manage their logistics out of Louisville. Looking forward to seeing how these intensives go and these more hands on interactive sessions. That's going to be a new thing for us and, and a dinner on Thursday night, which is not something we've typically done in the past. So whether you've come to the conference a bunch of times in the past or this is your first time, we've got something new for everyone. So thanks, Ashley, for filling us in on, on what to expect this year. Thank you, Cody. We are excited to talk about a new uh, offering that we're going to have at this year's Healthcare Systems Process Improvement Conference in Louisville. Uh, this is going to be our concept of intensives. And intensives are going to be kind of engaging sessions for all of our attendees to learn a new skill, explore new design thinking methodologies, obtain feedback on professional development, or really roll up their sleeves to actively collaborate with peers on innovative solutions to current challenges or conditions. 
Um, so this is a new offering for us. It's going to be different than our concurrent sessions. We're offering things like book clubs. Um, our experienced professionals group is going to be getting together. We're going to have intensives focused on professional and personal development, like resume reviews and work-life balance. Uh, we're going to have technical intensives on topics like artificial intelligence. Uh, and this is going to be part of the conference. This is part of your regular registration fee. No additional registration required. Um, this this is an, a conference offering. This isn't like a pre-conference workshop or facility tour. Uh, these are going to be after lunch on Thursday of the conference. Will be our first set of intensives, and then they will also be the conclusion of the conference on Friday. It'll be the last thing we do before we adjourn everybody from the conference at, at lunchtime on Friday. So you can attend an intensive of your choosing for each day, one during each of the two sessions. So now I'm going to introduce Tom West. Tom is going to be leading one of our intensives during the conference. So, Tom, do you want to tell us a little bit more about your intensive idea and what you're going to be sharing with folks at the, at the HSPI conference in Louisville? Cody, thanks for having me. And I want to share uh, some of the excitement you have, too. I think the intensive model in giving these opportunities to dive deep on a topic, spending 90 minutes with the subject matter expertise and also your fellow conference attendees is going to result in some tremendous learning, some wonderful networking. And I'm just so excited to be involved in this year. Uh, by way of introduction, uh, I've been on the podcast before, so maybe some people in the audience have heard me talk. Um, but my name is Tom West. I own a small consulting business um, that's based out of my home here in Indianapolis, Indiana. So I'm not too far from, is it Louisville or Louisville? Um, either place, I think they're the same place. It just depends on if you're from there or if you're not. It's going to be pretty easy to tell based on how you say the city. Um, but uh, the little company that I own is focused on helping organizations, I like to say, wage war on bad process using various improvement methods such as Lean Six Sigma, design thinking in the event that they have a process that's incapable of meeting customers' needs, or maybe they've never uh, developed a process with the customer needs in mind, and they just have to really re redesign it, blow it up, and make it tremendously different and, and better. Uh, so design thinking helps in that regards. Coach on project management, portfolio management, change management, all the nerdy stuff under the continuous improvement umbrella. Historically, I grew up in healthcare and a lot of my clients were in the healthcare space. It's very significant for me to work alongside those organizations. Although since COVID-19, it has been a challenge for them to focus on improvement uh, I do have a small percent of the portfolio uh, that I oversee has a business owner that are in the healthcare space. And I hope to see that grow uh, now that things have somewhat seemed to stabilize uh, regarding COVID-19. Absolutely. Uh, but as soon as you say that, as soon as you say that, things change. Um, but very excited to be attending the conference and and connecting back with that sector. Great, great. And we're excited to have you back. I know we've, uh, I've attended some of your presentations in the past and, and you, you guys always talk about really relevant topics for our audience and design thinking is such an interesting concept that, you know, I don't personally have a lot of experience with, but I know it's something you're going to be talking about during your intensive this year. So do you want to kind of elaborate on that? Tell us a little bit about more about what design thinking is and what specific elements of it you're going to be focusing on during your intensive. Happy to. Um, so in regards to continuous improvement, as I was talking about all those methods, uh, if you kind of look at it, maybe has a decision tree and you, your team, your organization, you're looking at a problem and you're going to ask yourself a couple of questions is, hey, for this problem, is there a known best practice that exists? And we just need to adopt it. We need to do a good job of implementing it and executing it well. In, in that regards, the, the toolbox you're often using is project management. Yeah. Um, and if no, no known best practice exists and the problem happens to be that the process is inefficient or there's a lot of waste, it's not uh, meeting customers' expectations or there's high variation, uh, oftentimes to really problem solve and address that issue, they're relying on the Lean Six Sigma tools. Uh, and then that last kind of question they might ask themselves is, do we even have a process or is our process capable of meeting customers' demands or something in the environment caused for a draft, drastic pivot or shift that needs to occur quickly. And we therefore, we need to innovate. And design thinking is an innovation toolbox. And all those toolboxes, it's not one replaces the other, but all these toolboxes are really meant to complement each other to help an organization really drive improvement 
uh, with the focus of giving their employees purposeful work so that through their efforts, they know their work is worthwhile and it's making an impact. And then beyond that, of course, is providing exceptional results to the patients, patient families, and the communities that they serve. So design thinking is a, I guess, long story short, it's a it's a toolbox uh, that helps people do improvement that more so emphasizes innovation, uh, maybe tools you'd find in the other toolboxes. So, Tom, I, I hear you talking about innovation and innovation is something that we struggle with in, in the healthcare industry. It's 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 not something that it's easy to systematically deploy. It's not something that, you know, an, an easy approach for us to follow more like a continuous improvement methodology that most of us are more familiar with. So how does design thinking help spur that innovation and, and, and achieve those more tangible results in a shorter time frame? I, I first kind of want to start with the theory of why I think innovation is hard in healthcare. And I'm sure there's other people who may have ideas too, but having led improvement teams in the past using DMAIC, using Lean Six Sigma, using A3 thinking, you know, this, they're all somewhat synonymous. Uh, as they go through and they solve a problem, they tend to, especially when it comes to the point of generating a list of ideas for improvement and solutions, they don't challenge themselves to think outside of the box, right? To be disruptive yeah. and to take these these risks to really do something unique and that's never been done before. I think obviously safety is a critical word in healthcare. That kind of some in some ways has translated to improvement teams playing it safe in regards to what ideas do they bring forward. And that's the beautiful thing of design thinking is it it challenges individuals, it challenges your improvement teams to really get out of their comfort zone and think broader by doing intentional exercises that that will focus on the extremes that will um, help to bring the problem to life through a patient story or a persona that allows you to put yourself in their shoes and see the world from their views. So I think sometimes healthcare organizations really look at their problems from the inside instead of the outside in. Yeah. Through this toolbox, they can really step outside of their every day and really see their work and their service through the lens of the patient, patient family, or community member. And uh, it also, in that, you know, helping to, you know, think broader, bigger, crazier. So outside of the box, think and look at the problem from your customer's perspective. Those are really helpful to get you to come up with ideas you probably never would have come up with using those other methods that I've mentioned. But beyond that, these ideas are meant to be tested quickly in the design thinking toolbox. And that principle is fail fast, fail cheap. Yeah. And I think that's a little bit different than the other method. Um, you know, PDCA, of course, is very uh, intentional cycles of learning that's iterative. but they're pretty scientific and data driven. And I'm not saying don't do PDCAs. I think that's essential uh, way to learn what works and what doesn't work. But in design yeah. thinking, it's more experiential and observational and conversational than what you tend to see happen in the PDCA. So you, a rough prototype, something that you wouldn't even put up on your fridge because the draft is so stick figurous and basic and rudimentary that it's somewhat embarrassing. But regardless of that, it's a doodle that somehow conveys an idea in a way that you can't using words and you sit down with your customer and uh, have a conversation about what do they think? And you're calibrating, you're getting feedback on that prototype that allows you to go from a very rough prototype to something that's slightly more functional, uh, but not overly developed or uh, costly that in the end, if you find out it doesn't work, you can't scrap it. And I think that's another thing in healthcare is this concept of sunk cost. Once an idea um, is, is proposed and acted on in healthcare, they oftentimes tend to write it all the way out just because the cost of bringing the idea to reality and in design thinking, most of the ideas, they're really not tangible. They're just conceptual. And, um, 
really iterated on in a different fashion than what you would see in Demaic or A3 thinking. But that's a really great explanation. I love the personal aspect of this because you're right. We do get so focused on the scientific method when we're doing PDCAs and Demaics and A3s that sometimes it is hard for us to really think outside the box, you know, whether we want to stay within our cultural norms of our organization or whether, you know, we're just looking for the quick fix to the complex problem. You know, I like the, I like the fluidity of this approach and how it really can forces you to consider other perspectives that you might not otherwise. And that's probably how we're going to get the most tangible improvements. So I, yeah, thanks for kind of restating all that. And you currently are in the healthcare space and I'm, uh, after a 10 year career of being in healthcare, now I'm on the outside looking at healthcare. So I'm still involved. I recall my previous career, the culture could accelerate change or really cause some barriers and challenges and drive to cause people to play things safe. Like I think there's no more expensive words than any organization and that won't work. Or, well, we've always done it that way. Yeah. And design thinking, like you just established different ground rules. Like we're there's no sacred cow. We're not trying to protect anything that exists today. In fact, our goal is to intentionally disrupt ourselves and innovate to bring forward something that we never would have arrived at had we followed our traditional methods of improving. Absolutely. Well, you've certainly motivated me to want to attend your intensive workshops. So I hope that uh, I can be there for that. And if- and learn more about design thinking in this approach. So is there anything else with regard to design thinking or intensives or the HSBI conference that you'd like to say to our guests before you sign off? I hope to see you there, Cody. I hope to, you know, engage with people. Obviously, as a speaker, you're you're educating and you're trying to motivate individuals to take knowledge and ideas out of the conference and into their back to their organizations and try to act on them and implement them. Uh, but uh, also in that dialogue, you get to hear their challenges, their successes, their goals and aspirations. And I really just look forward to that that dialogue and getting to hear people's excitement about design thinking and, and their ideas of how they can begin to utilize it in their organization. And hopefully through that, able to pique someone's interest and give them the courage they need to go back and challenge their organization to get a little bit more comfortable being uncomfortable, I suppose. Yeah, that's great. And I know that you call yourself an improvement nerd. So I'm looking forward to networking with you and all the other improvement nerds when we, when we get to Louisville in, uh, in February. So thanks again for your time, Tom. And uh, we'll see you in Louisville in February. All right. Sounds great. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, Cody. You've been listening to Problem Solved, the IISE podcast, a production of the Institute of Industrial and Systems Engineers in Norcross, Georgia. We hope you'll share this and other Problem Solved episodes with your friends and colleagues. Learn more about sponsorship and advertising opportunities, as well as how you can become a member of IISE by visiting podcast.iise.org.